possible second to hold Donald Trump accountable for, you know, just the incredible harm that he has done to our democracy. You know, and we also want every single one of the senators to know that we are watching them. Just as they are empowered to sit in judgment of Trump, we are empowered to sit in judgment of them. And we will. While their duty is to, to this matter will end soon, you know, we have a very long uh, future and long memories. And we're not gonna stop until those who vote to acquit him lose their Senate seats in future elections. And I'm just gonna say, uh, because I feel like I need to, this isn't partisan, this is American. It is about the very basic structure of our Republic and, and, and its stability for future generations, for my kids, for your kids. Last week um, on, on the podcast, I interviewed this amazing woman. Her name is Jamila Rakib. Uh, I interviewed her for my podcast and she was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize for her work in promoting nonviolent resistance. And it was such an incredibly powerful com uh, conversation and she was so inspiring. And I literally only talked to her for, I don't know, 45 or 50 minutes and I learned so much from her. Um, and I think the thing that I took away from it is that nonviolent resistance is not passive. Rather, it, it destroys your enemy by denying them the access to the systems that they use to maintain power. And this is why we are all here tonight. We are going to do our damnedest to deny Donald Trump and his enablers access to the senators who make our laws, who are continuing to prop him up and who are still our elected officials. We will demand that they do their constitutional duty and put nation over party. And we wanna make sure that they know that millions and millions and millions of Americans and their constituents are watching and we will remember what they do in this incredibly important moment. So we're gonna make sure that they are getting calls and emails and faxes. I don't know anyone that still owns a fax, but my father-in-law, but I'm gonna make him fax and letters and any other thing that we can do to just continue to keep the pressure on them. So I want you to, all know and look at yourselves, everyone who's listening and watching tonight, that you are defenders of democracy. So I thank you from the bottom, bottom of my heart and my soul and my being. I thank you for your patriotism, your hard work and your commitment to making America stronger than Trump ever thought she was or could be. I am so very honored to stand beside you tonight and always. So thank you for this opportunity. And now I am so thrilled to introduce Congressman Jason Crow. And Congressman Crow has been representing Colorado's sixth district in the House of Representatives since 2019. He served as an impeachment manager in the last the first Trump impeachment trial, and he has generously offered to share some of his time and insight with us here tonight. So Congressman, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Alyssa, my friend. Uh, so good to be with you tonight uh, and to stand with you to uh, defend our democracy. Your words were very powerful, and I'm still processing those. Uh, I would just appreciate, um, I've appreciated you as an artist for a very long time and for the work that you've done, but um, as an activist, as somebody standing up for our values and our democracy and really standing in the breach uh, the last few years in, partic in particular uh, has been um, a real honor. So thank you for that. It's uh, an honor. It's an honor to be of service. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something I've been finding myself doing a little bit more of recently. It, it, it drives my team crazy, but they always prepare talking points for me for these things. And I always just throw them out because <laughs> I feel like it's, it's most important to just speak what's on my mind. And, um, you know, uh, January 6th was one of those moments that just really jolted me. You know, sometimes when you have a moment that just jolts you out of um, your, your, your comfort zone, uh, you look at things in kind of a fresh way and you're able to look at things um, uh, at a different angle. So I wanted to share with all of you some thoughts on uh, January 6th, what happened uh, and what the path forward is. As, as some of you know, uh, I was one of those members of Congress, about two dozen of us who were trapped in the House gallery. That's the upper seating uh, for a while. We were surrounded and cut off by the mob and didn't uh, know whether or not we were gonna make it out of there. Uh, eventually they uh, came in and, and rescued us. But as I was sitting there surrounded by those rioters, we were barricading the doors, they were trying to break the doors down and um, we were uh, preparing to defend ourselves and the house gallery. Uh, you know, I had a chance to just think about uh, very briefly, how did we get here, right? How did we get to this point where um, people were attacking not just our democracy, not just the electoral process, but you know, murdering a police officer, brutally, brutally beating 140 others, and trying to assassinate uh, in, in, in mass members of Congress. Uh, what led us to that point? You know, and what is really clear is that this didn't happen overnight. This wasn't the result of one speech by, by Donald Trump on January 6th. This was groundwork that he has been laying for a long time. Uh, the, the lies, uh, the conspiracy theories, the assault on our democracy, the assault on the rule of law, the undermining uh, of, of the media, all of it uh, has been intentional and deliberate. And then of course, after he lost the election, we see the groundwork over those two months that he was laying to bring us to that moment on January 6th. So that's why tomorrow this trial is gonna start because we cannot as a democracy and we never will sit back and say, this is okay for any president to do, regardless of politics, that you cannot incite an insurrection, you cannot attack democracy, you cannot try to undermine the votes of millions of American people because you don't like the results. And, and we must have accountability because there cannot be unity and there cannot be reconciliation without truth and accountability. But there's something else going on here. You know, that, that alone, what I just said, that alone is more than enough to proceed with an impeachment and to convict Donald Trump. But there's something else really, really important going on here. Uh, and I just wanna speak from a place of humility for a minute. As I was sitting there in that house gallery, after I called my wife uh, and told her and, and the kids that I love them, I realized that this was the first time in my life that I have been on the receiving end of the violence of white supremacy and white nationalism and racism in America. And, and what that meant to me. Now, I'm gonna be really clear about something. I'm not drawing any false equivalency. I'm not trying to say my experience was anywhere equivalent or near the, the, the experience of so many of my brothers and sisters of, of color and people in this country that deal with this every day. But what, what I am trying to say is for a very brief moment in time, I was on the receiving end of that violence. And the humility that I brought out of that experience uh, is gonna make me a better person and a better leader. And I realized that I can and I must do more because so much of what happened that day is tied to our original sin as a nation and is tied to the legacy of white nationalism and white supremacy that has flowed through and, and um, tied into so much of what happens and doesn't happen in this nation. And you know, you, you just saw the symbols, you saw the hatred, the, the bigotry in so many people that day. We cannot sweep this under the rug, right? If we do not confront this, if we're not honest about it uh, and take it head on, then it will continue to happen. You know, we would send the message that is okay and we are willing to turn our back on it once again. 240 plus years is enough. We have to have the hard conversations and confront the truths now. 
And, and therein lies the opportunity, I think, for us as a society, for, for us as a country. Uh, and, and that's why I'm committed to making sure that we move forward, but after there is truth and there is accountability. Because again, you cannot move forward without those two. There is no, no situation in history where people address challenges, where they get over problems by sweeping it under the rug. We have to confront it and that's that process that will begin tomorrow. So again, thank you to all of you for staying up and fighting shoulder to shoulder to make sure we're doing just that. Um, it is hard work, um, but we can only do it. We must only do it together. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Those are some great words. And, and I agree so much that this is tied to the original sin of America um, and not addressing that. Um, and I agree 100% that we cannot move forward. We cannot begin the healing process without accountability. Uh, do you have time for a couple questions? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Okay. okay. All right. Let me check the chat here. Okay. Sorry, there are quite a few. If folks can use the Q&A tool because the chat is so busy, that would be very helpful for us in framing up questions. Okay. Um, uh, I can pose one. Yeah, that thanks. Be, that's okay. Um, Representative Crow, this is a question from Barbara. Um, Trump's tried to stage a coup and overthrow the election results in our democracy, he tried to corrupt the Justice Department, he tried to pressure the Georgia Secretary of State. Um, but he has such a broad agenda. Will the coup attempt be part of the impeachment manager's presentation in your view, if you know? Well, the, so the impeachment trial uh, that kicks off in earnest tomorrow uh, is focused on January 6th, right? So we brought one forth, one article of impeachment. It's incitement of insurrection. So it's focused on January 6th and the actions of the president that led up to and created uh, the insurrection on January 6th. Now, you know, there is, you know, we, are, we, are, we have entered one of the darker periods of, of American government and democracy there. Of course, there's rampant corruption, uh, nepotism, uh, and, and issues um, in the Trump administration to look at. Uh, but uh, this impeachment trial, the second one, is focused just on the, the actions of the six. Reggie, do you want to pose another question? Sure, yes. So there, there seems to be a lot of questions uh, here about Republicans, GOP, and the, senator, and, and the Senate. Uh, and so I'm wondering if folks are wondering if what, are, what efforts are being made uh, pushing uh, Republican senators uh, to convict. Yeah, you know, I, I learned um, a while ago, and, and this was confirmed for me again when I was an impeachment manager during the first impeachment trial, because people kept on asking. They say, you know, what if, what if you don't win? What if, what if you don't convict? You know, is it worth it to go through the process? Um, and first of all, I've said, you know, America has never not done something because it's hard and because the odds were stacked, stacked against us, right? If something is right and, and has to be done, if your duty compels you to do something, then that alone is reason to do it. Uh, and, you know, I can't control other people's actions. I can't control whether or not they will abide by their oath. You know, I've taken multiple oaths in my life. When I was in the army as an army ranger, and when I first came to Congress, and when I again uh, swore my oath last month, I can't control whether other people will abide by theirs. I can only control whether I will abide by mine and, and what my conscience and what my duty requires me to do. Uh, and, and that's the call. Right, and, and when you have to do something for the good of the country uh, and for the good of the people you serve, then, then that, that alone um, is sufficient. So the task before us, I think in the next couple of days and weeks, is we have to remind those folks of their obligation and their oath, right? Because ultimately this is um, a moral obligation, right? Not a political one. Uh, and they have to be reminded about um, what they have to do to fulfill that oath and that obligation, whether it's to God or whatever higher power or just to yourself, to your family or to your constituents or all of the above. Uh, and that I think is the call and that's the case 
predominantly to be made here. Thank you for that. And uh, one more question for you. Uh, and this one is just a lot of chat about accountability. Uh, and so if Trump is not convicted, um, what else can be done to ensure that he doesn't run for office again or to ensure that folks in uh, office are held uh, at a higher ethical standard? Yeah. So, um, you know, there are very limited options outside of impeachment for accountability for either a current or former president. But uh, the, the larger challenge before our country here is, is how do we reconcile? How do we come together? Because here's an honest truth. And this is something that, that um, should all uh, bring some humility to us. After four years of the Donald Trump president, presidency, 47% of voters said, sign me up for more, right? 47% of the country said, this sounds good to me. Let's keep going. Now, how did we get there, right? Now, certainly there are elements of racism, bigotry, and misogyny that are driving some of that. But there's also this larger um, frustration and anxiety about the American dream being out of touch for folks, right? I come from a Republican background. I come from a working class family. And you know, a lot of my family uh, voted and supported President Trump. And you know, what that tells me is we have our work cut out for us to actually deliver meaningful change for people's lives. And I said, the, you know, I've always said the best way to come together and to, to reconcile and to rebuild trust because trust is badly broken in our nation. Sometimes the best way to rebuild trust is just to work together, right? The power, the transformative power of work. Because when you're getting sweaty next to somebody, whether it's building a road, building a house, um, you know, working to deliver healthcare, it's very hard to malign somebody. So at some point, we just have to start doing the work to bring us together and to rebuild trust because that, my friends, that, that is the antidote to Trumpism. You know, this, this anxiety, this anger, this apathy to the system is to deliver and to make things better and to show that we can work together. And if we do that, then we won't have to worry about whether Donald Trump can run, run again because people won't want Donald Trump to run again. They'll wanna move forward. Uh, and I think that's the best way to resolve this. Thank you so much, Congressman, for that. that it's amazing. Yes, we have to work together. We have to. Uh, so just for the sake of time, uh, I think uh, that was, we're going to end Q&A for that. I, I would love to continue doing some more Q&A. Um, but for the interest of time, uh, I think it's a great segue for us to move into actions. A lot of folks are asking, what can we do? Uh, what can we do if we have Republican senators? Uh, so now is the time uh, that we can answer some of those questions. All right. So tactics. Uh, we'll be talking about a few tactics. Uh, but the first, uh, I think, what we talk about is our calls. Calls to your senator. So as others have said, uh, Alyssa and Congressman uh, Crow have said, it's crucial that we input pressure on, on Senate Republicans to convict Donald Trump and disqualify him from holding public office in the future. Like I said, there are many ways, but I think one of the, the easiest and most effective ways to persuade your senator to make a is to make a direct call to their office. In recent weeks, Republican senators um, have told their colleagues that they're receiving phone calls from Trump supporters, and that really does make a difference. It makes it easier for Trump defenders to claim that the public is on their side. But I know that our coalition, the folks on this call, and folks watching on Facebook Live can drive more calls. That coalition line number is 844-447-7270, as you all can see on the screen. Callers will hear a short message with talking points before being connected to their senator or the Capitol switchboard. Stand Up America members have made over 50,000 calls to Congress just this month. And groups like the Sierra Club, Public Citizen, Daily Coast, Move On, Common Cause, and many more making tens of thousands of calls. Uh, I believe at this point, the coalition a total is over 100,000 calls. This coming week, we're planning another big call push targeting Senate Republicans. If one of your senators is a Republican, I would especially encourage you to call this week. You can even call tonight, leave a voicemail. And then to help, help amplify your message, you can ask three fans to call as well. Feel free to send that call in number to them or even post it on social media 
to encourage your followers to make the calls as well. I can't urge you enough to please call your senator. This is an uphill fight. There are 17 Republicans that need to vote for this. And it is crucial that Trump is held accountable. He must be convicted and disqualified for running for president in 2024. And as has been said before, once we have accountability, then as a nation, we can begin to heal. And then now there are other tactics that we can, that we'll move forward. There are phone banking is, Akane uh, or Izzy, would you guys like to talk about uh, the phone banks that we have? Yeah, happy to. So, so many of you are in states where you do not have GOP senators or senators who might consider voting no on impeachment and you've called and you've told them that you support them voting to convict and disqualify Trump from holding office again and you wanna do more. And many of you have already been joining our phone banks uh, to fellow activists in key states um, with Common Cause and Public Citizen. And we have more phone banks, one every day this week. Um, so if you go to this bit.ly slash justice number for us, you can sign up for any number of the tactics that we're talking about here, including these phone banks. Um, so you'll see they're listed Pacific time first and then Eastern just to give the West Coast a, a chance to, to be first. Um, but we really hope that you can join us. It's really fun. You're calling people who already care about democracy a lot, not just random people. Um, so we are getting a lot of calls into those key senators, those key GOP votes for impeachment. So we hope you'll join us. And um, there's some other things that you can do and we'll get into this a little bit more later in the call, um, but you can submit a letter to the editor. There's actually a couple of different tools the average effective, easy to get published letter is a response to a story. And it's really short, like five sentences long is ideal. And this tool will help you submit that letter to your local papers that accept them. We're also having a Twitter storm tomorrow at three o'clock Eastern noon Pacific. So if you like to post and tweet, please sign up again at that same action link, bit.ly justice for us. And we will let you know how to participate. In fact, there are people tweeting on impeachment and the call for our senators to do their duty and protect our democracy every day at 3 p.m. Eastern. All right. I turn it over to Jiggy Athelingham to talk to us about how to talk about the trial. All right. So we have this big, important trial happening. And so uh, as we're all going to be talking about it, just going to go through a couple of best practices on um, how we can be talking about it. So first thing, next slide, are kind of our evergreen uh, needs for our narrative in general. And this is kind of true across the board. So firstly, we always want to lead with our values and affirm the positive vision that we're going to be achieving from this impeachment trial. And what we've seen come out from the research is really the- Hey, the sorry to interrupt you, Jiggy. I just wanted to make a quick note. I think at this point we were going to stop the Facebook Live. I just want to make sure that we've done that. Yes, we are. And actually, I apologize. We skipped ahead. Ladon was going to share a few thoughts about creative actions as well. So we're going to go ahead and- wrap up on the live, but if folks are interested in joining us, please fill out the link at bit.ly slash justice for us and stay engaged that way. You should find that in the description in the live stream. Thank you. 